This is the edentulous uh, span, maxillary right first bicuspid tooth. And as you can see here, we certainly have the mesial distal dimension for a root form implant um, of at least a foro diameter type, uh, if not greater. And um, looking at uh, three, six, uh, eight uh, millimeters roughly. And we know our width dimension was approximately eight uh, plus almost nine. And length, of course, is not an issue, 20 millimeters. So incision design will be very conservative with an envelope type approach, which I typically like. My preference here is a mid-crestal and cellular approach. And by cellular, I mean not just at the crestal area, but certainly onto the facial and onto the palate, hence the H configuration. So we'll just uh, literally full flap reflect to visualize our crest with this H incision, but no release incision is needed here. So from approximately here to the crest is what we'll be looking at uh, for emergence. And, um, um, but from this point south, or I should say apical, let's just forget the directions here, but just apical, we want to be three millimeters apical to this free gingival margin. That's the most important um, element, uh, parameter of the, for vertical placement of the implant. From a mesial distal dimension, we'll be looking at just splitting the ridge. So we'll begin with a 15C blade. I like this blade. It's a little on the thin side. And it allows me to make a cellular incision um, very nicely versus the conventional 15. So again, a mid-crestal incision. So we've made the crestal incision now the cellular incision that once again will continue onto the facial about midpoint of in the, in initially the bicuspid and now the cuspid which is of course the tooth anterior to our edent site. We'll go ahead and reflect our flap using a quin elevator. And now on the facial. Okay, so now we're going to do a little crestal plasty. Okay, we're going to take a core biopsy here, since we have what appears to be excellent, most likely D1 bone. As we can see now, we have our core within the trephine, and we'll submit that for uh, histopathologic review. Now we'll proceed with our 2 pilot burr, even though this is a little larger osteotomy, but we need depth, so we'll just continue directly. And now our 2-5. Now slowly, if you could, close down, bite down all the way on your back teeth. Keep biting. I'm verifying that the directional pin is going into the central fossa, the adjacent bicuspid, so we're in good shape. Okay, so we'll continue with the 3-2 diameter burr. And now with our next burr, which is a 3.7 diameter. And the final burr now, which is a 4.1 millimeter diameter. The implant will be a 4.6 by 12. So now we'll go ahead and place our insertion bit right into the implant body. So here we are with the Bi-Horizon Tapered Internal Laser Lock Implant. This is the 3-in-1 abutment that acts as a mount, preppable abutment, and a, an impression coping. And I will introduce it to the field. And as you see here, and we're binding quite well. So now we'll just manually complete the implant placement, which is what I like to do all the time. This gives me a nice proprioceptive feel for the implant insertion itself. 
So we angled here to the mesial, and that will just come back in. This is the advantage of being able to manually torque this. We'll take out our 3 in 1 abutment. So now we're looking at placing our healing abutment. So this implant will be placed in a non submerged mode. Now we'll go ahead and close around the healing abutment and our soft tissue closure will be such that we'll rotate some flaps to be able to um, get the uh, closure we need around the abutment itself. Uh, sometimes we'll rotate, many times in this case we have so much attached uh, keratinized gingiva that all we need to do is excisional flap design here, meaning a concentric resective piece here. And just using a 15C blade. So we're ready to close now. Here we're just going to go with a foral vicral. We'll place two simple interrupted sutures and basically uh, be done. So here we have it. We've been able to place this 4.6 millimeter times 12 millimeter length by horizon taper internal laser lock implant into the number five site, maxillary right, first by cuspid. And as you saw, we made an H a configuration incision, mid crestal, sulcular, envelope flap, little crestal plasty, place the implant, non submerged, good insertion torques and um, a three millimeter right healing abutment and of course primary closure just by using the existing flap keratinized gingiva we resected tissue from both the pellet and the buccal aspect and we're able to very nicely get a uh, closure and a good result like this so approximately 10 12 weeks of healing we will verify integration of the implant once again and at that point the um, implant abutment crown complex can be uh, completed thank you very much